Hey boys and girls, good morning. All right, happy Monday. We are going to continue on with chapter three, lesson 3.2. We're talking about estimating products. Now we've already been exposed a little bit to estimating when we're, we, you know, we round the digits and then we multiply. However, this time we are going to be um, rounding both digits and then multiplying to find our estimate. So let's go ahead and get started and look at number one. All right, so we've got 31 times 32. Now, we already know our rounding rules. We're always going to round to the highest place value possible. So when we look here, which number are we looking at to help us round, right? We're gonna look at this number to the right. And what does that one tell us that that three needs to do? Exactly, that one is going to tell that three to stay the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that three down and when we round what does everything behind the underlying digit change to exactly it changes to a zero so that's going to round to 30 bring down my multiplication symbol and now we're going to round that 32 as well so same thing we're going to look at our highest place value possible we're going to check our digit to the right to see what we're going to do with that place value so what is that two telling that three to do Right, anything four or less is going to just let it rest or stay the same. So that three is going to stay the same as well. That two will change to a what? A zero, very good. Okay, so now we're just gonna multiply those two numbers that we've rounded to. Okay, what's a really quick way I could multiply these two numbers? Yes, exactly, I can use my basic facts. I can do three times three what is three times three very good three times three is nine and then what am i going to do next right i see two zeros in my problem one zero here and one zero here and i'm going to add those to the end great job so our estimate for 31 times 32 is 900. Remember, the estimate is not the exact product. It is just a, a roundabout amount to what this might be, okay? Because the actual answer could be higher or lower than this. All right, let's look at another example. We've got number two, 96 times 34. So which numbers are we rounding here? Exactly, we're going to be rounding both of them. So let's go ahead and look at this 96 first, okay? I'm going to round to my highest place value possible, and then I'm going to look to my digit to the right to figure out what I'm going to do with that. So when I look next door, I see that six. What do my rounding rules tell me that I'm going to do now? Right, I'm gonna add one more. If it's five or more, we add one more. So when I add one more to nine, what does that go? What does that go to? Right, it goes to 10. So we're going to round that to 10. And then everything behind it changes to a what? A zero, very good. So 96 rounds up to 100. I'm gonna bring my multiplication symbol down. Now let's look at 34. All right, going to round to the highest place value possible. Look next door. What is that four telling that three to do, boys and girls? Exactly, that four or less, we just let it rest. It stays the same. So that three is going to stay a three and everything behind it changes to a, wonderful, a zero, good job. Okay, so now what's our next step? Very good. We have got both of our numbers rounded. So now we are going to multiply to get our estimate. What do you see that we could use to help us multiply? Very good. I see that one times three as well, because I know one times three, right? What is one times three? Very good. It is three. And then what would be my next step? What do I have to do next? Very good. I'm going to have to add those zeros that are in my problem. So I've got two on this side and one here. So how many total zeros am I going to be adding behind this three? Very good. I'm going to be adding three zeros behind it for an estimate of 3,000. Great job, guys. All right, another example, 47 times 39. If I round that four, what is it going to round to? 
Very good. That seven tells that four to add one more. So it's going to become a five. And everything behind it changes to what? A zero, great job. So 47 rounds to 50, bring down my multiplication symbol. Now when we round 39, what's that going to look like? Good, that nine is going to tell that three to add one more. So the three becomes a four. And everything behind it changes to a what? Very good, a zero, great job. All right, what basic fact do you see that can help us multiply this? Wonderful, five times four. Shout it out at me, what is five times four? Good, five times four is 20, five, 10, 15, and 20. Very good. And then how many zeros do you see in our problem that we're gonna have to add? Right, one zero here and one zero here. So I'm going to add two extra zeros to the end of my answer for an estimate of 2000. Great job, guys. All righty, I want you to go ahead and pause the video and I want you to write these two problems down and solve them on your own. Then once you've solved them, I want you to come back and go through it with me and see if you got it correct. Hit pause, we go through this all the time, guys. Thank you. All righty, glad to have you back. I hope you worked those out. So I'm gonna go through these two quickly because you were supposed to work them out already, remember? All right, so 51 times 73, I'm going to round to my highest place value here. Look to my neighbor next door. That one tells that five to stay the same. So five stays the same. Everything behind that place value that we rounded to changes to a zero. Very good. So you should have rounded that 51 to 50. Bring down our multiplication symbol. When we round 73, we're gonna look at that three to help us figure out what we do with that seven. What is that three telling that seven to do? Very good. It should have told it to stay the same and everything behind it changes to a zero. Wonderful. Then what basic fact did you use to multiply? Good job, that's exactly what you should have used. Five times seven. Five times seven, what did you get? Very good, that's exactly right. 35, 35. How many zeros did you add to the end of your answer? Very good, one zero here, one zero there, adding two zeros to the end for an estimate of 3,500. Wonderful, all right, last one, let's see how you did. That two is going to be told what to do by the six, that six is going to tell that two to add one more, because anything five or more, we add one more to it. So that two becomes a three. Everything behind the place value we rounded to changes to a zero. Bring down my multiplication symbol. And then when you rounded that 44, what did you get? Very good, you should have gotten 40. When we look right here next door, that four tells that four to stay the same. So I'm gonna bring that four down and everything behind it changes to a zero. Very good, okay. And then what basic fact did you see that stuck out at you that helped you multiply? Good, yeah, three times four is correct. Three times four, boys and girls, what did you get? Just shout it out at me, shout it, shout it, shout it. Woo, not so loud, calm down. Right here, right here, right here, guys, okay? But 12 is correct, so great job. And then how many zeros did you add to the end? Good job, because there's one here and one here, so you should have added two zeros to the end for an estimate of 1,200. All right, guys, not a super tough lesson today. Kind of a little bit of review of estimating and a review of multiplying by tens from yesterday. Um, tomorrow, it does get a little bit more tricky, but don't worry because we're gonna spend two days on the lesson we start tomorrow. Um, you guys did awesome today. You're so smart, you're getting smarter every day. I will be right back here tomorrow with you. I hope you guys have a pencil and paper and you are ready for some more math. See you then.